Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back to the Political Machine 2016 or 2016, whichever darned way you want to say it. My name, of course, is Obi Potato. We are into the last 10 weeks. Now, I did sort of say that the last episode would, uh, would sort of be transitioning in, or in the last episode, I said that we would be transitioning into the last episode now, so I theoretically said that this is going to be the last episode. I'm not entirely sure if that's going to be correct anymore. Now, the reason that I say that is because we've got a lot of speeching to do, right? And although we are winning, right, in terms of the popular vote, which is really, really nice, the actual people that are voting for us, and in, term of the, uh, in terms of the electoral votes as well, you know, we're doing... We're doing pretty darned well, if I do say so myself, and I do indeed. Uh, it's nice to see that we're actually doing well, in comparison to our last playthrough, in which we did uh, less, less well. Yes, let's let's just uh, let's just leave it at that. Less well, uh, but yeah, pretty pretty happy with how things are going, and we want to try and continue. We want to do as many speeches as possible, and we want to accelerate our lead if it is uh, if it is at all possible to do so. So. A couple of states that are really, really important for us, New York, Pennsylvania, Ohio, all of which are, you know, I don't want to say we're not going to win them, but there's a lower likelihood of winning them when they're purple than if they were just simply, you know, dark blue. I mean, this is a definite state for us right now. So, yeah, we need to try and speech it up a little bit. And in terms of the late game, speeching it up is really the opportune way to go about doing things. And the reason that that is the case is because usually you have long-term benefits uh, thanks to placing down adverts and whatnot, the, you know, like TV ads and the, the, the leaflets. You get long-term benefit for doing that, but you get short-term benefit for doing some speeches. So I'm going to be doing some, uh, some speeching. That's right. Speeching is indeed a correct term. Wow, we're still winning in Florida, miraculously. I'm very surprised. I'll be honest with you. I'm very, very surprised. All right, let's get a let's get a speech off in New York. What do the people care about in New York? Oh, not much that we are actually happy about. Or well, we've got a lot of Democratic voters, right? Which is kind of nice, but at the same time, at the same time, people really are not very popular with us. Or people are not very popular with us. We're not very popular with the people. Let's give a let's give a speech on deficit reduction. You know, I I think. We'll do that. That'll give us a plus 3%. That's actually securing it, right? So it's making it blue, which is exactly what we want to see. And as long as it's blue, I'm happy with that. You know, I, I can totally settle with that. Vermont, we're actually going to have to go and, uh, and, and speech in Vermont very, very shortly indeed. But that is not now. That is not now. Let us check what is in Pennsylvania. Anything of interest to us. Uh, reducing unemployment is fairly, fairly interesting. Student loan reform. Student loan reform is even better. Student loan reform is a fantastically juicy subject for us. And if I'm not mistaken, yeah, there's uh, a few higher uh, Democratic voter percentiles than, uh, than there are Republicans. Anyway, let's talk about student loan reform. Very, very popular with the Democratic base in Pennsylvania. Again, it's going to allow us to secure that state. Make it blue. Make it rain, baby. Make it rain blue. That's right. Make it rain blue. I'm worried about Michigan. I'm, I'm always worried about like these states. Ohio, how on earth? How on earth has she managed to come back? Raises your opponent's fundraising potential in the state by 25%. The money man, that's kind of cool. Well, you know what? We've got the option to hire uh, uh, an operative right now. And I think, you know what? We're, we're probably going to go for a fixer. Can we go for a fixer? There we go. Okay. Let's deploy him. There we go. Take you out. Exactly. Fiorina loses key supporter. Media darling withdraws from election campaign. And that's actually the second time that we've done that. And if you'd ask me, do I feel guilty about that? Hell no. Not at all. Not at all. Absolutely not. I do not care in the slightest. Anyway, what are we winning at and what can we really speak about? Student loan reform seems to be one of those issues that we are very, very in favor of. Social security, on the other hand... Social security is very, very big for us. Let's talk about social security for a second. Plus 1%. I'll take it. It's not bad. And you know what else I'll do? I'll also slander my opponent in another speech that I do. Uh, I will do an opponent opposes. Exactly. Look at that. Lowers the Democrat appeal. Lowers their independent appeal. Lowers the Republican appeal. Give a speech on that. Fantastic. 
Good stuff. So that is going to move her uh, her opinion of Social Security further into the negative. And I think, you know what, it, it could be worth just sticking around in Ohio just for one more turn, specifically to try and do another one speech. Uh, I think that's actually probably what we're going to do. If we give another speech on Social Security, then it'll probably give us uh, less of a boost. But, you know, a boost is a boost, and uh, you can't really complain about that, can you? you? You can't really complain about that. Next stop on the list, potentially Florida. I mean, we want to secure Florida. We know this. I keep talking about how important Florida actually is. North Carolina, also a very, very important indeed. I, I really don't care. Like, raising your fundraising potential? That's stupidly irrelevant, I'm afraid, buddy. But whatever. It doesn't matter. It, it just doesn't matter. Anyway, let's head up to uh, Vermont. There we go. And let's give a speech on something that matters to the folk here. Now, ideally, it would be on something like student loan reform. I mean, and I think that's probably what we've got to go for, actually, considering um, considering nothing else really floats in our favor. I mean, we've really, we've really only been capitalizing on Social Security and student loan reform. Like, that is, that is the big two for us. So let's talk about student loan reform. There we go. Plus 3%. That's not bad. We're going to stick around here for another turn. Don't worry about it. New York. Also, pretty darn worrying. Pretty darn worrying. North Carolina. We're losing support in North Carolina. Not good at all. What the hell is going on here? Political operative. Increases awareness by 1% in the state. Mm, that's, that's okay. Like 91% of people know about you anyway. So who cares? But whatever. We'll give another speech here, and we'll give another speech on student loan reform being amazingly awesome. And then you know what? Let's give another speech saying, my opponent opposes student loan reform. There we go. And secure the state once and for all. 52% of the, uh, the electorate would vote for us, which is exactly what we want to see, isn't it? Right, now we're going to go and contest one of the big ones. We're going to go and test, uh, contest should I say, North Carolina. Very, very important for us. And everybody's sort of around North Carolina, you know, this week anyway. So, uh, it'll be, uh, it'll be good to see that. Furina's opinions on secure the borders fuel new adverts. Not great, not great. Anytime there are, uh, new adverts, it's never good. Now, I really have no idea why she's flying all the way out to New Jersey, because she's never gonna win it. You're never gonna win it. We've got 56% popularity there. 56% of the, the people would actually vote for us. And we're not even at full awareness yet. Like, holy cow. We're doing great. We're doing absolutely amazing. Okay, so what actually matters here? So she's clearly been giving some speeches on repealing Obamacare. And I think, to be honest, we've just got to talk about deficit reduction. <sighs> Nobody... Nobody really cares about much in here. So what, what I think we're actually going to do is we're going to go for a slightly different strategy. We're actually going to build the HQ, right? And the reason that we're going to build the HQ is because we really, really, really need access to these uh, to these other 10, 10 issues, you know, for example. So, exa for example, at the, you know, without the HQ, we only get the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, top 5. Are we doing very well in the top 5? No. In fact, we're doing really, really badly if you look at just the top five. I suppose the Common Core, but we really haven't talked about the Common Core at all. And my campaign is not really, not really focused on it. And I've put some effort on it. Not really. Not really. Deficit reduction, it says it's a key issue, but, we're, you know, we're on 56 appeal. It's not great, you know, for example. But now, if we get access to gay marriage, then look at this. Look at this. Like, this is very, very important for us. And it can, uh, can really, really boost our popularity. Unfortunately... Unfortunately, this is a this is such a polarizing issue that um, that it actually will will turn away the significant number of people that are Republican. But at the same time, at the same time, we're in a very very good position because there is a vast majority of or a vast majority. There's a vast minority of people who are um, independent voters, right? So we've got this entire percentile to win, or you know we've got this entire two percentile to win. But whatever. Um, I think we're going to actually give a speech on Social Security. I think that's probably the best thing to do. It's it's less polarizing than gay marriage. Although, you know, gay marriage does give us quite a boost. I think, you know, without a doubt, Social Security is the way to go. And, you know, we're going to stick around here for probably another whole turn because we simply need to. Also, up in Maine, my opponent is not catching up quite yet, but, you know, 
could be, could be a threat, shall we say. It could be a threat. Louisiana, she's also got some ads down. Ohio, she's trying to take back slowly but surely, but I'd be damned. We're not going to let her. We're absolutely not going to let her. Social Security. Wait, so does Social Security now... Yeah, Social Security is not bad. Social Security makes us look freaking badass. Here we go. I favor Social Security. Let's do it again. And then, once again, we want to give another speech. Social Security. Okay, where is it? There it is. So, at the same time, we're dragging it up to the top of... To the top of what the voters think is important, which is really, really good, actually. And there we go. Plus one percent. So that means we've we've got fifty percent of the people that are actually going to vote for us in the state of North Carolina, which is very very good. You know, once again, it's a good start, but we can't get complacent. We absolutely cannot get complacent. So, as you can see, at the start of this episode, we started with uh, about four hundred three electoral votes, and now we're down to three hundred fifty five. So, she's clearly gaining, right? She's absolutely clearly gaining. Uh, but but we can't let that stop us. We cannot let that stop us. We must prevail. We must prevail and uh, and and come out victorious. Yes, let us try to do that. Where to next? Wow, Missouri. Holy shit. We've lost Missouri. We've lost Iowa. And we're losing Michigan slowly but surely, actually. Let's go to... Let's go to bloody Missouri. Yeah, I mean, we need to. We can give a we can give a speech on Black Lives Matter. Actually, that seemed to go down very very well. At the same time, she's trying to uh, to contest trying to contest. What am I talking about? She's trying to secure a whole bunch of states down here. Now the annoying thing is New Mexico, right? Typically, is is democratic. Like, I really don't know why we've not won in in uh, in New Mexico, but that's potentially going to be a problem for us. Actually, hmm. Let me give a speech about Black Lives Matter. I favor Black Lives Matter. There we go. Plus 2%. Not bad. Give speech. My opponent opposes Black Lives Matter. There we go. And plus 2%. That gives us 50%. That's very, very good. And then you know what? We're going to do something ballsy. And now, it's not often that I do something that's ballsy. But we're going to try it, right? My opponent has got 66% awareness in the state. So, if we can just, you know, if we can just... If, if 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 people in 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 the state of New Mexico can just be a little bit more away aware of uh, of us as a candidate, then we're in a much much better position to contest this state. I think. So we're going to create an ad. In fact, let's cancel. Let's have a look to see what's actually on the agenda here. Uh, student loan reform. Student loan reform. It's not super super important, but let's do it. Fucking national TV ads. Student loan reform. I favor it. Let's do it. Let's also give a speech as well, saying, hey, student loan reform is the way forward, ladies and gents, and we're going to win back the hearts of the New Mexicans. That's right. Um, I'm also going to put out a ground leaf that, that says, uh, my opponent my opponent hates student loan reform, you know? Let's, because let's, let's praise our own policies and simultaneously slander our opponent's policies. Darn right, that's how politics works, sunshine. That's how politics works. But anyway, it's sort of a little bit of a muddle over here, isn't it? I mean, we've we've barely contested the Central American belt like at all. Like this is this is the first foray into New Mexico campaigning that we've actually done. And as you can see, look, wow, look at this. We're gonna win forty percent of the vote or forty seven percent of the vote. That's that's impressive. Because we were not in that position, you know, literally just a turn ago. So it's really, really good to see that. Now, we're back up to 370 electoral votes. Not bad. Not bad at all. But, hey-ho, we're working on it. We're working on it. And, I don't know, like, how difficult is it going to be to win Missouri? Probably pretty darn difficult, in fairness. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I really do not know. I'm just thinking, well, what's the best way to go about doing it? Probably talking about maybe student loan reform or deficit reduction. Even she's known for deficit reduction. Deficit reduction is really, really great because everybody can get behind deficit reduction. You know, you're, you're a politician. And you say, oh, yeah, yeah, we need to get the deficit down. Like, you know, if, if that's all you say, then that's fantastic. But it doesn't really mean all that much. Hmm. Well, you know what? This is certainly going to be the last episode. That's that's without a doubt. 
we're going into the last turn, which is very, 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 very sudden. I only just looked up there. And uh, I'm just thinking, what do we have to do to change the outcome of the of the sort of election? I suppose maybe giving a speech or two in Iowa. We're going to win Pennsylvania. Fingers crossed we're going to win Ohio. We're not going to win Indiana, but we were never scheduled to win it anyway. We're never. It was never a plan to win it. Are we going to win Minnesota? Yes. Are we going to win all the states that we have been predicted to win? In fairness, we're going to win more states than we've been predicted to win because all of these central states have been predicted to be Republican and they are strongly Democrat. Look, 53, 57, 54, and 54. Wow, wow, wow. 55%, 55%. So th these are really, really strong percentages that I think my opponent would find very, very, very challenging to actually... Uh, to actually bring down now if i'm not incorrect we can actually talk about farm subsidies yeah let's give a speech on farm subsidies i favor farm subsidies there we go anything to win votes anything to win votes and my opponent opposes farm subsidies that's right there we go on plus three percent i am i am the candidate that's sticking up for farmers that is indeed that is indeed correct there we go it comes down to the wire with jim webb and carly i can't even say her name at all Fiorina starting to feel the burn of 41 weeks the two candidates are forced to push for one more week of last minute vote grabbing hands will be shaken babies will be kissed promises will be made but will it all capture enough votes to bring home the presidency we'll know in a week so we are now in the very very last turn which is hugely exciting isn't it I think it's very very exciting indeed and I can say with confidence we're in a good place we may not be in the best place but we're in a good place and where can we do the most good in the last turn? Good question. Holy shit, we got 61% of the vote in Arkansas. Fort, only 46% of people know my opponent. Holy cow. That's impressive. Very, very impressive. I mean, where is she going to go? She is my opponent. Where is she gone? Ah, she's over here. She's trying to win South Carolina. Uh, good luck with that. I've got a 56% majority there, so or 56% uh, share of the vote there. So good luck doing that. Connecticut, we're going to win. And I don't think we've even visited Connecticut once, which is a real shame. Rhode Island, haven't even visited. And we're going to win it. How great is that? New Hampshire, don't think we've even visited. And we're probably going to win. Maine, we might not actually win. Hmm. New Hampshire, yeah, we're going to win fingers crossed i mean we're predicted to win 376 so quite a lot in fairness but could be more where can where can we do the most good i suppose probably maine if we go to maine and uh, we give we give two speeches then that'll pretty much sort it out i think we've got a naturally higher amount of democrats in this state anyway so that's that's absolutely fine any issues that are important to people we can talk about student loan reform i guess i mean i suppose by you know putting national tv ads on that really assisted uh, getting the profile of student loan reform actually up in the minds of people and every time i give a speech about how crappy my opponent is when it comes to student loan reform it just makes it even better and there we go we've actually managed to secure the state of maine as a definite democratic seat and that's without even even looking at the undecided voters very very nice to see indeed ladies and gents we're going to be going into the final final turn Let's do it. Boom. I would expect all of these to be blue. All blue. All blue. There we go. Apart from that one. That can, one can be red. Yep, these these throw these the three at the bottom can be red there as well. Yeah. Oh, that's blue. Okay. Wow. Red, red, red. This is the central belt. This is this is fine. This can be red. I'm okay with this. Blue. Yes, we did actually manage to win New Mexico. That's fantastic. Blue, blue? Oh bad hawaii is going to be blue that's for darn sure but hey ho ladies and gents look at that that is absolutely phenomenal absolutely phenomenal i got an achievement home court denial i presume that uh that means that you know we won california even though our opponent was from california wow that that face dude that that is quite an impressive face i don't even know who this guy is i think this is my running mate actually yeah 
I, I don't know. Webb has won the day and the presidency with a strong showing in both the popular vote and the Electoral College. Fantastic to see. One of the deciding factors in Webb's victory was his use of political capital, which he used more extensively than Fiorina. I think it's Fiorina. I have no fucking idea. And Webb spent less money than Fiorina, which just goes to show that you don't have to buy your victory. Exactly. Let's take a quick look at the map just to appreciate how darned amazing it is. Yeah, we won. I, I didn't. I didn't think we'd win Mississippi, or maybe I did think we'd win Mississippi. It must have been close in these states. It really wasn't actually. Like, we should have really campaigned a little bit more over here, perhaps. But you know, it didn't really matter. But you know, just for the future, we should have maybe concentrated a, a touch more on those states. It was quite close in New Hampshire. It wasn't really very close in Maine, not in Massachusetts. I wouldn't imagine it would have been close in, in many of these states. But, you know, let's check for the, the sort of uh, the swing states. So Ohio, for example, 52 uh, percent. That's that's not actually that close. And Florida, Florida, once again, is on 52 percent. So that's not super, super close, but it's not super, super far away either. I mean, Arkansas, we got 63 percent of the vote. That is just crazy. That is that is a lot. That is a very, very large percentage. I'll have, you know. Yeah, but, uh, wow, holy shit, Missouri, very, very close indeed. Very, very close. But it's nice to see that we won the sort of eastern, central-ish belt. I mean, apart from a couple of rogue states. Now, we didn't actually win Michigan, which was a little bit annoying because I talked extensively about how I thought we should uh, concentrate a little bit on Michigan. But alas, I guess we just did not. I forgot to, and I instead spent my last turn of campaigning up in Maine, which was... Probably not something I actually regret, although Michigan is worth significantly more electoral votes, but at the same time, you know, we fucking won, didn't we? We fucking won. We fucking won. Like, you can't complain about that, can you? Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very, very much for watching The Political Machine 2016 or 2016, whichever darn way you want to say it. My name, of course, has been Robin Potato, and until next time, bye.